Hello, my name is Emily, as you may or may not know, and today we are going to be talking about weaponized incompetence. <laughs> my favorite thing. A glorious endeavor. Now, if you are not familiar with the term weaponized incompetence, it is defined as when an individual demonstrates helplessness or strategically showcases a lack of skill or ability in order to avoid certain tasks or responsibilities, resulting in others stepping in and doing the task for them. So this is not when someone genuinely does not know how to do something and they simply need guidance. Uh, this is intentional. It's dumbassery with a purpose. The term can be used in different contexts, but people mainly associate it with relationships, especially long-term relationships where there's more tasks and responsibilities present. Anyone can demonstrate weaponized incompetence, but there has been a significant amount of women who have observed this behavior in their husbands, and it's more likely to be seen in men. Obviously, there are very caring and capable husbands out there, but for these specific type of husbands, uh, you know, really the cream of the crop, right? Uh, they seem not able to perform housework or childcare tasks adequately, or they just don't do the tasks at all unless they are explicitly told to do so, even though it should also be their responsibility to begin with. And this is why some women feel like not only are they raising their kids, but they're also raising their husband. And, you know, some men, they really do, they feel attracted towards women who are maternal towards them. Honestly, you know, mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry. Freud, you win this round. You know, you ask the wife, oh, how many months is your oldest? And then they say, 540 months. You know, they're so rambunctious at that age, still trying to breastfeed, what? I just wanna show you guys a few examples of weaponized incompetence so you can get a better idea of it. My ex-husband told me on Friday that he couldn't pick our sons up from school because he doesn't know which school they go to. I've shared this before, but I was briefly married in my early 20s to a man who kept insisting he didn't know how to do the laundry. We lived in an apartment and had to use the laundromat, and I figured we could just trade off laundry days. He insisted he didn't know when to use bleach. I said, only when you have an all-white clothes load. Otherwise, just don't worry about it. Asshole would constantly come back with bleach stained clothes. Not only that, but mysteriously only my clothes would have the bleach stains on them. Always with the apology of, it's confusing. I was post-surgery and starving and asked him to make me an instant porridge. It was a chocolate powder and needed some boiling water mixed in. He brought me the powder in a bowl, no water added in, insisting it's being served correctly. This man had a PhD in a natural science field. He'd used that as an argument to why what he's serving me is correct while he was giving me literal powder without water. My ex kept leaving his dirty boxers on chairs. When I confronted him about it, he said, I don't know where the dirty clothes box is. He'd been in my house for two fucking years. So a couple of years ago, a post went viral on Chinese media. A new dad is asking for help. And his question is, we just have a newborn baby. And suddenly my wife starting to ask me to do a lot of things, like helping her with dishes, helping her with chore, and helping him with the baby. So the dad's question is, what can I do so my wife will not ask me for help? And hundreds of dads provide their advice to this dad. The answer with the second most like that, just play dumb. Every time when your wife asks you to do anything, just play dumb and make things messy. Like you have a low IQ. So top like answer that, okay, that is so immature. Let me tell you how I handle it. So every time when my wife asks me to do something, I will immediately do it. And sometimes I will even voluntarily to help her with certain things, like cleaning the dishes or helping with the baby, change the baby's diaper or feeding the baby. But I will intentionally to mess things up. When I voluntarily to do the dishes, I will break a glass or two. So every time I will mess things up on purposely, but every time I will voluntarily to help with my wife. So she will feel grateful that I'm willing to help. And she will understand that I want to help. I just cannot help her because I cannot do it as good as she did. Historically, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, taking care of the house, that was considered the woman's job. And then the man was supposed to be, you know, working in the office or working in the factory or, you know, dying in war, <laughs> right? There was a very uh, distinct labor distribution. People thought that a woman's place was only in the home, but then we were able to get jobs and then we were able to vote and then we were able to have other dreams and aspirations and then, some of the men were like, oh, fuck. And now we are in a day and age where the working woman is commonplace and gender roles are fading, you know, more and more every day. So the previous labor distinction should not be commonplace anymore. And everything I'm saying is literally in no way revolutionary whatsoever. This should really just be common sense, but apparently it is not. 
But I want to say, you know, there is nothing wrong with being a housewife. You know, some women, they do embrace the more uh, traditional dynamic of, you know, they stay home and they take care of the kids and take care of the home while their husband is the breadwinner, right? And if you are happy and comfortable in that dynamic and you feel like what you're meant to be doing is, you know, to be a mother and and to keep a home, then that's, then that's wonderful. You should take pride in that work because it is work that should be respected, right? It is such important labor and there's there's not even any pay. But even if the husband is working a full-time job and the wife stays at home to take care of the kids, I mean, you can't clock out of being a parent. Okay, it's a 24-7 endeavor, so I really do think that both parties need to be participating still. With a full-time job, you still get time off. You know, you don't get time off from being a, a mother or father. You know, like, oh, no, Susie, I can't chuck you in right now. I'm off the clock. Also, a lot of women are in the workforce and they are taking care of all of the housework and the childcare. Because some men still see that solely as the woman's role, no matter what other responsibilities she has beyond that. Or maybe they're not even consciously thinking about gender roles and they're just fucking lazy. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, sure, whatever, I'm a feminist, but uh... I'm not doing those dishes. In a relationship, especially when there's children involved, ideally things are supposed to be 50-50. And if you are purposefully avoiding responsibility and overworking your partner, I mean, that is just nasty work. Honey. Oh, hey, sweetie, how was work? It was fine. I only cried five times today instead of seven. Why is there wet laundry in the oven? Well, you told me to dry it. Yes, by putting it in the dryer. Well, I mean, the oven's hot, the dryer's hot, you know, isn't it all just the same shit? No. No. Okay, okay. So does that mean I should take the pot roast out of the dryer? <clears throat> the pot roast is in the dryer? Yeah and the potatoes. <clears throat> you put the pot roast and the potatoes in the dryer? All right! All right, stop freaking out, lady. Okay, don't worry, I put dryer sheets in there I'm too. I'm not freaking out! I'm calm. Let me just ask you this, honey. Um. Why the fuck would you do that? Well, the last time you taught me to use the dryer, you told me to never forget the dryer sheets. God, I can't win with you, Jesus Christ. Sure, sure, right. So, you remember that part, but you don't remember the part about only using the dryer for clothing. You, you never told me that I couldn't put food in there, okay? You should have been more specific or put a sign up. I should not have to do that, okay? Do I have to tell you to use toilet paper when you wipe your ass? Sometimes a reminder would be nice. Jesus Christ, okay. I apologize for yelling. Uh, just tell me this. The breast milk that I pumped this morning, did you put it into the fridge? Because I texted you asking you to put it into the fridge because I forgot to do it before I left for work this morning. Were you able to do that? Yes, yeah, I put some breast milk in the fridge. <sighs> okay. Yours smelled weird though, so I made my own. What? Well... What the fuck?! Why is there a vat of raw chicken breasts submerged in milk in our household? Uh, for our baby. Duh, okay. She's been drinking from the pot like a little Pomeranian all day. Oh wait, here, I have some videos. Listen to me! Just... From now on, do not touch anything, okay? I will just do it myself because ever since we've gotten married, you've been acting like every single day is your first day on fucking earth! I mean, do you want to try some of the brew I made? It's pretty- Put that down! Okay. I am going to remake dinner, and from now on, don't touch anything, okay? 
I mean, if you insist. And I'm sure many of you have heard of the nagging wife trope, you know, like, oh God, the old ball and chain. She won't stop yapping demands at me like a drill sergeant. <laughs> Women, am I right? Periods. She's probably on it. But I can't help but associate weaponized incompetence with the nagging wife stereotype. Because has anyone considered where the nagging stems from? Because typically, if someone is asking you to do something more than once, it's because you haven't done it or you haven't done it properly. Like, oh, my bitch wife keeps nagging me to take out the trash. She's asked me like 10 times already. Why does she keep doing that? Just because I haven't done it? Not to mention that the term nag is really almost exclusively used with women. If a woman asks you to do something over and over again, it's an annoyance, it's bitchy, it's naggy. But if a man asks you to do something over and over again, it's authoritative and it's assertive. I was reading a Reddit thread from a male perspective just to like, not even play devil's advocate, just to like, hear what the devil had to say and like roll my eyes a little bit. <laughs> but you know, a lot of it was sexist. No surprise there, right. Uh, but there were certain aspects that I could find a little bit more understandable and more of like communication issues, right? So maybe a difference of opinion on what the right way to do something is. Like if I fold the laundry in a certain way, but you don't really like it to be done that way, or the matter of like timing, right? Like I, I will get to this certain task. I just want to be able to do it within my own reasonable amount of time because maybe I have to do something else first. So in cases where it is genuinely a matter of timing and opinion rather than just pure laziness, I do think that communication can solve some of those issues and you know, it doesn't have to turn into something insidious that you know, kills your relationship slowly from the inside out and leaves it frothing at the mouth and quivering on the whole cold hard ground. However, with weaponized incompetence, not only is it a method to avoid the nagging that may have been taking place, Place, but the tasks as a whole and to devoid yourself of any of those responsibilities. You know, there is no sense of this is how I like to do it or I will get to it. It is simply, I know that you will get to it because I have rendered myself useless and I've been acting like I have sharts for brains so that you can't depend on me for anything and you'll just do it yourself. It just seems to me that like these types of husbands, if their wife or any woman really, asks them to do something more than once, it becomes naggy and annoying. Both of you, be quiet, do not make a sound. Oh my god! Oh shit! Shh. I just said be quiet! What the fuck? I don't want to hurt you, okay? But I do have a weapon in case I have to. Honey, put your hands up, he has a weapon. Honey, put your hands oh. up. Oh my God. Will you quit it with the nagging woman? Good God. I'm just saying. Put your hands up. Yes, sir. Now I know you have a safe. Where is it? You, you have to go upstairs and then into the bedroom at the end of the hallway. And then the safe is in the walk-in closet. The key is uh, hidden in the, the, the brown cowboy boots. Okay. Did you hear me? I said you have to go upstairs and then to the end. Who's going upstairs oh, right. now? Okay. Jesus, stop nagging me. He's okay? going. Thank God, I have a headache. Would you, would, you, would you stop nagging the poor man? God, I can't take this anymore. I'm about to use this thing on myself. Yeah. You and me both, buddy. It's like, lady, I heard you the first time. What the fuck? Exactly. See, you get me, bro. We should get a beer after this. What the hell? Another instance that can be related to weaponized incompetence is wives making little prize boards for their husbands. So whenever they complete a task like around the house or that has to do with the kids, they give them like a little sticker or like a blowjob. To be clear, this isn't something that runs rampant throughout married couples, okay? I don't think most married couples are not this far gone. But for this type of relationship, I mean, it literally takes bribery to get your husband to participate in household duties or taking care of your children. I'm sorry, but babes, if you have to dangle a can of beer in front of your husband so that he'll change a diaper, I'm fearful for you, girl. I'm shaking in my Prada boots for you, girl. I'm just kidding, I don't. I'm shaking in my... New balances. And listen, I'm not trapped in a marriage with a lazy man and I never will be. So I can't, I'm not in the shoes of these women who are probably doing this sort of thing as a last resort. But assuming these couples actually do this and unfortunately I'm fearful that some of them are, uh, 
if the workload is truly not balanced and the only way that you are going to be able to get your husband to pull his weight is literally through bribery and, and giving him things in the grand scheme of things is that really going to be helpful to like enable that sort of behavior like this is a fully grown man Okay, not a toddler or a fucking lab rat. You're just gonna be creating a dynamic where the completion of shared, shared responsibilities is only gonna result in one person getting compensated, right? And this is supposed to be a partnership. And with women, we don't get the privilege of positive reinforcement when it comes to childcare and housework. It's just expected of us. Even if men are not getting physical rewards for participating in their children's life and doing things around the house, society rewards them with praise, right? You hear about a man who was very involved with his children's life and very active in doing chores and you think, wow, what a great dad, right? You know, you see a man pick up his daughter from soccer practice and everyone is like, oh my gosh, what an amazing father. And it's like, you know, he's just picking up Tanya from soccer, okay? He didn't solve global warming. I feel like society does not praise mothers to that degree, right? Because mothers are just automatically supposed to be involved. A deadbeat dad is just another sheep in the herd, but a deadbeat mother, you are just pure evil. And you know, I'm not trying to say like, oh, all of us women need to band together and all neglect our children together. May our prosperity suffer. You know, that is not what I'm trying to say. I think that both parties should be equally involved, right? And no one should be necessarily more praised than the other. It's less likely that women would even weaponize their incompetence to get out of, you know, family responsibilities. But if they were, no one would be giving them prizes and trying to reward them for doing the bare minimum in the way that they do for men. No one's giving a mom a prize for taking care of her kids. Sorry, I, I know that I'm a bit early, but I just wanted to make sure I beat the rush hour traffic. Oh no, trust me, you're fine, okay? I mean, parents are usually so busy, they don't <sighs> even come to these parent-teacher conference things anyway. Right, right, right. Well, you know, the kids are fed, they're with the babysitter now, so we're all set. You fed your children. Yes, yes, of course. Who are you calling? The press! The press? Hello, uh, is this Time Magazine? Wonderful! Okay, listen to me. I have your new person of the year. Okay, get here as fast as you can. Here? Oh wow, that was really fast. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> what's going on? You're going to be our new person of the year, that's what. Why? Because you feed your kids and you clothe them and you don't let them crawl around on broken glass or chew on roadkill. Yeah, and you help them with their homework and take them to soccer practice and you make sure that the house doesn't get biohazardous and that there's not sewage laying around and, you know, you, you've never put razor blades into their candy. You deserve a reward. Exactly. Exactly. Aren't those, like, basic things that all parents should maybe do? Perhaps so. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know what? You don't deserve Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Here, let me uh, just call someone else. Hi, Jim! Jim, how you doing? Uh, I have a candidate here for a Nobel Peace Prize. So it's been made clear that weaponized incompetence is something that we mainly see in men, but I know that some people may be thinking, Probably men are thinking, you know, women are not exempt from this. With weaponized incompetence, yes, even though it's not as documented with women, I'm sure it still happens. I know it still happens. Listen, the whole feminism thing, rock on. Go, girly pops, I'm right there with you, okay? But I think we're forgetting the power that we have in playing dumb and acting stupid. And we give men shit for using weaponized incompetence to not do things, but we can do it too, right? <clears throat> I got a flat tire one time. I know how to change a tire. I, I have the kit in the back. I know how to do all of that but I don't want to, I shouldn't have to, right? So instead I get out, I present him on the phone with my dad. I'm like, dad, what's a tire? What's a jack? I, I'm lost, I don't know what's going on, I don't know who I am. However, there are societal structures put in place that I think are worth mentioning when we talk about weaponized incompetence and women and you know when that may occur. In the way that women are expected to cook clean, take care of the kids, men are expected to you know mow the lawn, fix a car, build a tree house, change a light bulb, grill a steak, you know, like more physical <laughs> tasks. I don't doubt that some women use their incompetence to get men to do these more physical tasks for them. When it comes to a marriage, you know, I don't think that anyone should be 
manipulating anyone or playing dumb to their partner for any reason, really. Uh, I, I don't think you guys should be plotting and scheming on each other like Dr. Doofenshmirtz. I think you guys should probably like kiss and hug and hold hands a little bit. Outside of marriage and in the grand scheme of things, I do think that it's important to mention that whether a woman is a victim of weaponized incompetence or is the perpetrator of it, at the end of the day, it really seems to all boil down to society's expectations of women in a patriarchal society. From what we've seen, you know, when a man strategizes his stupidity, it is to put a woman in a position of servitude, which has been ingrained into society. When a woman strategizes her stupidity, it is to take advantage of the idea that she is not as smart or capable as a man, which is also ingrained into society. An example of women using weaponized incompetence is in the Barbie movie. In the end of the film, all the Barbies strategize together to play dumb and stroke the men's egos and manipulate them into getting what they wanted, right? And it worked because men, they like to feel powerful and they like to feel smart and they're a lot of them are ready to believe that women are dumb. And I do understand how playing dumb isn't really helping our cause because at the end of the day, you're still just maintaining the idea that we're dumb. But here's the thing, with some of these men, it it does not matter how overtly smart you are. You could have a PhD from Harvard and big brain and, you know, a minor in juicy knowledge. <laughs> and you know what? Some of these guys would still view you as inferior. In both situations, no matter who is doing what, there is an influence of systemic patriarchal views of women, which always places her as lesser than the man. <sighs> what the fuck? Dude, sorry, can you open this for me? Yeah, I can open that. Easy as shit. Thank you. Do you need your oil changed too? W my oil changed? Yeah, you know, I know girls, <laughs> they don't know a lot about cars, so uh, there's a good chance it needs to be changed. Uh, I don't drive, so. The roads are probably safer that way. Yeah, word. Word. Yeah. Whenever I get a female Uber driver, I just hit cancel on that shit and I start walking. <laughs> you know what? I actually do need help with something, though. What? My taxes. Yeah, you know, us women, we're just not very good with numbers sometimes. You know, one, two, three, four, five. It's like, oh, I'm already exhausted. You know, the only time I can pay attention to numbers is when I'm looking at my Instagram likes. Of course, of course, yeah. I mean, I know, women, they're not supposed to handle documents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, have you tried TurboTax? You know, I'm not too good with technology either. <laughs> you know, unless it's Instagram. Instagram. Right. Of course. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'll, I'll do your taxes, sweetheart, that's fine. Oh, you know what else you could help me with? I have this project for work where they want me to do all this data analysis, and I don't even know what that means. And it gives me angina to even open up an Excel spreadsheet, so do you think you could help me with that too? Sure, yeah, you know, I wouldn't want you to hurt yourself looking at all those numbers. Great. I need predictive sales analytics based on this consumer data for the past six months, and I need you to make a growth strategy plan by tomorrow morning. Um, can you do that? Because I can't, you know, because I'm a woman, so, um, they, they, you know, they only hired me because I was a diversity hire. Right, right, yeah, that makes complete sense. Mm hmm Well, I guess if it's got to be done right, I should just do it. Exactly, yes, thank you so much. You know, have fun doing that. I know how you men love to do smart things. It is our specialty. Totally, totally, yeah, okay, so just let me know when you're done with that, and again, Thank you. It is so nice having around an intelligent, talented, capable, manly, manly, masculine man around to do all of these uh, manly things. So yeah, just let me know when you're done. What the fuck does this mean? Overall, if you're married, don't manipulate your partner into overworking. Okay, I, I didn't think that I needed to say that, but apparently some people need to hear it. I know I'm probably gonna get hate comments from sexist men. Uh, you know, any video of mine that has even feminist undertones, I always get, you know, hate comments from sexist men. But I don't really care because that's not my target audience. I do want to emphasize that there are good 
caring, nurturing men out there. And you know, these negligent husbands are not the only type of husbands that are out there. And I know that it's hard seeing things online, especially on Twitter, Jesus Christ, um, you know, of just all the awful things that, you know, some men can say and, you know, it puts a disgusting taste in your mouth and this or that. But I think it's really important to remember that not all men are like that, and that behavior is not inherent to the male species. species. I acknowledge that men are raised and conditioned in a certain way, but to say that it is inherent to them strips them of their autonomy. It relieves them of taking accountability for their negligence and their actions. You know, the type of rhetoric of like, well, he's a man, that's just how they are. Like, no, that's, that's not true. I think that's very, you know, boys will be boys type rhetoric. If a boy or man is sexist and disrespects women, I don't wanna think of that as just par for the course, okay? We need to hold them accountable for that. So, yeah. That's enough feminism for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure that you drink water. Make sure that you, if you're a man, make sure that you know you are not sexist. If you're a woman, make sure that you're, make sure that you have a good day. <laughs> right, okay, until next time. Susan, come on, what you, what the, what the? <laughs> Oh God. I rate them one star and say, I'll walk. <laughs> Word. Word. Yeah, whenever I get a uh, female Uber driver, Uber, I keep saying Uber, like one, two, three, four, five, it's like, what's next, six, apparently, right? But yeah, so if you could maybe just, <laughs> I have this thing for work where they want me to do all this data analysis, and I've never heard of that. <laughs>